Hello everyone, I am Dr. Adarshdeep and today we will discuss about population growth and regulation. By tracking populations over time, scientists can see how these populations have changed and may be able to predict how they are likely to change in the future. Monitoring the size and structure of the population can also help ecologists to manage population for example, by showing whether conservation efforts are helping an endangered species increase in number or not. The most fundamental law of population ecology was suggested by Thomas Malthus in 1898. In his essay, Principles of Population, where he proposed that population will grow or decline exponentially as long as the environment experienced by all individuals in a population remain constant. The population ecology can be studied on the basis of three major factors. One is the population characteristics which includes or describe the population. Second is population dynamics which includes the theories of population growth. And third is population regulation which includes the study of factors affecting the population density. So let us study in detail population growth and regulation. After completing the chapter, you will be able to define the population, characteristics of population, regulation of a population, significance of studying human population, trends in world population, human population growth rate, causes of increase in human population, factors controlling human population density, and methods to control the overpopulation. Generally, a population is defined as a group of individuals of the same species that live together in the same place or area at the same time. In other words, we can say the term population is defined as the total number of individuals of a species occupying a particular geographic area at a given time. So we have used a word species. So you must know about the definition of species also. So it is a group of similar individuals share a common gene pool and are capable of interbreeding among themselves to produce viable fertile offsprings. As I have told you earlier that the population ecology can be studied on the basis of three major areas. First is population characteristic, other is population dynamics and third is population regulation. So first of all, we will study characteristics of population, which are population density, birth or natality, death or mortality, age distribution, population growth, biotic or reproductive potential, environmental resistance, carrying capacity, age ratio, population fluctuation and population cycles, population dispersion. Let us take one by one. First of all, population density. Population density of a species is the number of individuals of a species per unit area or volume. For example, number of animals per square kilometer or the number of trees per acre of a forest. Population density reflects the success of a species in a given area and it is the end result of the interaction of the biotic potential and environmental resistance. So, population density, which is denoted by PD, can be calculated as N divided by S, where N is the number of individuals in a region and S is the number of unit areas that is taken in meter square for land and meters cube for aquatic animals. And here meter square means the volume. Population of an area is described on the basis of three parameters, number and kind of individuals of a species, a given space or an area, and third is time. This density is of two types. One is crude density and other is the ecological density. Crude density is the number of individuals per unit area in a total area or the volume, but as only part of total area may be inhabitable 
by the species. So the number of individuals per unit in habitable area or volume is called the ecological density. That means for the crude density we are taking the total area and for ecological density we are taking the inhabitable area only. If the people are considered evenly distributed on earth, crude human population density would be a little over 19 persons per square kilometer. Since only 30% of our land area is inhabitable and if on this area the human population is uniform, the population density of the world could come to be about 27 persons per square kilometer. But distribution of human is not uniform. Some areas are thickly populated while some areas are thinly populated. If we compare India and China, India is with the less total population than China but is more densely populated as China has a land mass thrice than that of India. Now, birth or natality rate. It is generally expressed in number of births per thousand individuals of a population per year. The actual birth rate being achieved under existing conditions is called realized or ecological natality. It is also called fertility rate. So ecological natality is the actual birth rate being achieved under existing conditions. But theoretical or the maximum or the absolute or the physiological or the potential natality is the maximum number of possible births per thousand persons under ideal conditions. It is also called as fecundity rate. But this physiological natality is never realized and realized natality is always less than the potential natality. Or you can say the ecological natality is always less than the physiological natality. Why is it so? It is because of two factors. One is that all the females are not equally fertile. And number two is all the eggs laid may not hatch and all the larvae or youngs may not survive up to the adult stage. Natality is expressed as delta N N divided by delta T, where capital N is the initial number, small n is the new individuals and T is the time. Now death or mortality. It is commonly expressed as the number of deaths per thousand individuals of a population per year. Lowest death rate for a given species in most favorable condition is called the potential or the minimum mortality. And ecological mortality is the actual death rate being observed in existing conditions. It is also known as realized mortality. Realized mortality is always much more than the potential mortality as many individuals die due to unfavorable climatic and biotic factors. So, natality always increases the population size and mortality always decreases the population size. Now the age distribution or age composition. It is the relative abundance of the organisms of various age groups in a population. So age distribution is another important characteristic of population which influences natality and mortality. Mortality usually varies with age as chances of death are more in early and later periods of lifespan. Similarly, natality is restricted to certain age groups as for example in middle age group in higher animals. The distribution of ages may be constant or variable. It is directly related to the growth rate of the population. Depending upon the proportion of age distribution, 
three kinds of population are there first is rapidly growing population second is stationary population and third is declining population in growing population the birth rate is high but the death rate is low a growing population has large percentage of young individuals that means of reproductive age and relatively few old population that means in the post reproductive age the example of this type of population is india and china second is the stable or stationary population in this the birth rate and the death rate are equal so it remains stable this type of population found in germany poland and iceland and in declining population or the diminishing population the birth rate is lower than death rate here the number of age old population is more than the young individuals the examples of declining population are countries like japan and italy in other words the ratio of various age groups in a population determines the reproductive status of the population so it is clear that in a population individuals are of different ages and the proportion of individuals in each age group is called a structure of that population the ratio of the various age groups in a population determines the current reproductive status of the population thus anticipating its future according to wooden hemer the individuals of a population can be divided into three categories pre reproductive reproductive and post reproductive groups the individuals of pre reproductive group are young those of reproductive group are mature and those of post reproductive group are old so age structure typically of fast growing populations in which majority of the population are relatively young is known as youth bulge now the age pyramids age pyramid is a model in which the numbers or the proportions of individuals in various age groups at any given time are geometrically represented in an age pyramid the number of pre reproductive individuals is shown at the base and that of reproductive age group in the middle and the number of post reproductive individuals at the top the shape of each pyramid changes with the change in the population age distribution over a period of time so the age pyramid indicates whether the population is expanding or the stable or diminishing and accordingly three hypothetical age pyramids have been suggested which you can see in this slide pyramid with broad base or triangular pyramid shows a high percentage of young individuals and an exponential growth of population due to high birth rate as for example in yeast house fly and paramecium under such conditions each successive generation will be more numerous than the preceding one and thus a pyramid with a broad base would result you can see the slight difference in first two pyramids the first one shows high birth rate as well as high death rates so it shows rapid fall in each upward age group and also shows short life expectancy in second triangular pyramid it shows high birth rate fall in death rate as more living in the middle age so it shows slightly longer life expectancy now second is the bell shaped pyramid this type of age pyramid shows a stationary or the stable population having more or less equal number of young and middle aged individuals and the post reproductive individuals being the smallest in the number so you can see here it also shows declining birth rate low death rate more people living in old age third is the pyramid with the narrow base 
This pyramid shows increased numbers of middle-aged and old organisms as compared to young ones in the population. It is indicative of contracting or diminishing population. Such an unshaped figure is obtained when the birth rate is drastically reduced and the number of individuals in the pre-reproductive group is less in proportion to the other two age groups of the population. So it shows low birth rate, low death rate and higher dependency ratio and also longer life expectancy. Now the population growth. Population growth is determined by number of individuals added to the population by birth and immigration. That means the entry of more individuals of a species in an area from outside and the number of individuals lost from the population by death, that means mortality and emigration, that means moving some individuals of a species out of an area. So, if more individuals are added than lost, then the population will show positive growth. But if more individuals are lost than added, then population shows negative growth. But if two rates are equal, then the population will become stationary and is called zero growth. Therefore, population growth is equal to births plus immigration minus deaths plus emigration. Next is the demography. The scientific study of human population is called the demography. It deals with three parameters. One is change in population, either growth or decline. Next is the composition of population, for example, age, distribution, age ratio, sex ratio, etc. And distribution of population in space. Now the demographic transition. It is the stage of zero population growth when birth rate and death rate become equal and is achieved at the replacement level when average fertility rate is 2 is to 1. It has been reached by a number of developed countries but it might take many decades of years in the developing countries. Demographic transition involves four stages. First is high birth rate but fluctuating death rate. Second is continued high birth rate but declining death rate. Third is declining birth rate and death rate. And fourth is low death rate but fluctuating birth rate. Next is the growth curve or form. Growth of a population can be expressed by a mathematical expression called growth curve in which logarithm of total number of individuals in a population is plotted against the time factor. Growth curves represent interactions between biotic potential and the environmental resistance. Two basic types of growth curves are there sigmoid or S-shaped growth curve and other is the J-shaped growth curve. Sigmoid or S-shaped growth curve, it is shown by yeast cell and most of the organisms. It is formed of five phases. First is the lag phase in which the individuals adapt themselves to the new environment so there is no or very little increase in population. Second is the positive acceleration phase. It is the period of slow increase in population in the beginning. Third is the logarithmic or the exponential phase. It is the period of rapid rise in population due to the availability of food and requirements of the life in plenty and there being no competition. So population tends to double with each generation so that the growth curve rises steeply upward. Then the negative acceleration phase in which again there is slow rise in population as the environmental resistance increases. Then stationary or the plateau phase 
Finally, the growth rate becomes stable because mortality and the natality rates become equal to each other. So, there is zero growth rate. Such a stable population is said to be in equilibrium or the saturation level. Now, it fluctuates around this constant level. Next is the J-shaped growth curve. It is shown by a small population of reindeer experimentally reared in a natural environment with plenty of food but no predators. It is also known as unrestricted or the exponential growth curve. It has only two phases. First is the lag phase. It is the period of adaptation of the animals to the new environment. So is characterized by slow or no growth in population. Second is the logarithmic or the exponential phase. It is characterized by the rapid growth in population which continues till enough food is available. But with the increase in reindeer population, there is corresponding decrease in the availability of the food and space which finally becomes exhausted and leads to mass starvation and mortality. This sudden increase in mortality is called population crash. Next is the biotic or the reproductive potential. It is defined as inherent capacity of a population to increase under optimal environmental conditions. It is represented by the symbol R. It is calculated as the multiple of number of youngs produced at each reproduction and number of the reproductions in a given period of time. If biotic potential is unchecked, the number of any species will soon be overcrowded. Some animal species with high biotic potential are paramecium, which undergoes three binary fission in 24 hours, then cod, 1 million eggs per year, oyster, 114 million eggs in one spawning, like Ascaris, 70 million eggs in 24 hours. If we talk about the biotic potential in human female, it is estimated to be about 12 per female during its reproductive period between the puberty, the age ranges from 10 to 14 years, and the menopause period that ranges from 45 to 55 years. The rate of increase in a population under ideal conditions is called intrinsic rate of natural growth or R-max. Next is the environmental resistance or the population regulation. In nature, full biotic potential of an organism or the population is never realized because the conditions are rarely ideal. Various harmful environmental or the abiotic factors like non-availability of food and shelter, accumulation of waste and pollutants, natural calamities like drought, cloudburst, floods, fires, temperature fluctuations, accidents, and certain biotic factors like pathogens, parasites, predators, unfavorable age and sex ratio, all these check the biotic potential from being realized. The sum of all these inhibitory factors is called environmental resistance. So, actual increase is the balance between biotic potential and environmental resistance. Thus, environmental resistance does not allow population growth to so toward infinity. One more interesting thing is the environmental resistance is generally low. When a small number of individuals are introduced in an area with plenty of food, so the individuals multiply at high rate and there is rapid increase in population size which also increases the environmental resistance due to decrease in the food availability and increased intraspecific competition. Next is the carrying capacity. It is defined as the feeding capacity of an environment 
of an ecosystem for a population of the species under provided set of conditions. It is also defined as the level beyond which no major increase can occur. This limit is constant and represented by capital K. When a population reaches the carrying capacity of its environment, the population has zero growth rate. So the population generally stabilizes around the carrying capacity. The carrying capacity of the earth for human population is considered to be about 8 to 15 billions. Carrying capacity of the environment for a population depends upon three major components. First is the productive system, which produces food and fiber. For example, crop lands. Second is the protective systems, which buffer air and water cycles and keep moderate environmental temperatures like oceans. Third is the assimilative systems, which utilize the wastes produced by human activities, for example, waterways, wetlands. Productive system and protective system collectively form the life supporting capacity, while assimilative systems collectively form the waste assimilative capacity. Next is the sex ratio. The number of females in a population per thousand males is called sex ratio. Therefore, sex ratio is equal to number of females divided by 1000 males. Average female to male ratio in world population is 1 is to 1. According to census in India, average female to male ratio was 929 per thousand. It was lowest in Andamans while it was highest in Kerala. That is about 1034 female per 1000 males. Census 2001 showed a sex ratio of 933 per thousand male. The decline was higher in the economically developed states like Punjab, Haryana, Gujarat, Maharashtra, Delhi and Chandigarh. According to 2011 census, Kerala state has highest sex ratio that is of 1048 female per 1000 male. While lowest sex ratio is reported in Haryana that is 877 female per 1000 male. Next is the growth. Next is the population fluctuations and population cycles. The populations are not stable and do change due to a number of extrinsic as well as intrinsic factors. These variations in the population are of two types. First is population fluctuations or the eruptive variations. In these changes, population density tends to fluctuate irregularly above and below some steady state level. These are characterized by sudden increase in population in short time, which is followed by equally quick decrease in population size. These are caused by random seasonal or the annual changes in availability of resources like food or energy or extrinsic factor like temperature and rainfall. For example, more birds during early summer due to their hatching period and more insects during summer months and more weeds in rainy season. Similarly, human population also showed population fluctuations during the Middle Ages as the population of Western Europe declined rapidly due to spread of plague commonly called Black Death. Then population cycles. These are regular changes in the population size in these population size is nearly constant over a long period of time. These are caused by seasonal changes in environment like population cycles of lemmings of tundra that is of three to four years. Lemmings lemus lemus is a small mouse-like rodent found in arctic region of Canada and Norway. 
their number is increases for a period of about 3 years when it reaches a peak beyond the carrying capacity of that area they eat up all the available food in the winter months the lemmings migrate in large numbers in sea and swim till they are drawn due to the exhaustion the surviving lemmings multiply and repeat the process the populations of the predators like arctic foxes and snowy owls also show similar oscillations as those of lemmings next is the population dispersion population dispersion is the spatial pattern of individuals in a population relative to one another there are three basic patterns that occurs regular dispersion here the individuals are more or less spaced at equal distances from one another this is rare in nature but is common in managed systems like cropland or in the animals with territorial behavior tend towards this dispersion next is the random dispersion here the position of one individual is un related to the position of the neighbors this is also relatively rare in nature third is the clump dispersion most populations exhibit this dispersion to some extent with the individuals aggregated into patches interspersed with no or few individuals such aggregations may result from social aggregations such as family groups or maybe due to the certain factors of the environment being more favorable for the population concerned so this is all about the population growth and regulation and now in this session we will discuss some important questions from this chapter these questions may be framed in two categories one is very short answer type questions and other is short answer type questions very short answer type questions you have to answer in two to three lines and sometime in a single word and short answer type questions you have to answer in a single paragraph so let us discuss the different questions first we will do very short answer type questions so first question from this category is define population next question is what is population density third is differentiate potential natality and realized natality next is define age composition give its significance next is what are growth curves next question is define biotic potential why it never realized next is what do you mean by carrying capacity next is what is sex ratio and the last question define the environmental resistance write its significance second category is of short answer type questions and first question from this category is list the characteristics of population next is define population density which factors regulates the population density of an area next question is what are age pyramids explain three types of age pyramids next is define growth curves explain two types of growth curves next question is write a note on age composition and the last question from this category is define demography explain demographic transition so to all the questions make a pdf and send it to your teacher in your college 
this will help you in examination goodbye thank you